Hey everybody, sorry for my absence last week, but we're back now. Another week gone, and uh, lo and behold, another record broken. Natural gas consumption by the U.S. power generation sector hit its highest ever level on one particular day during this week. It got up to 44.5 billion cubic feet per day during that particular day. The average for the week overall uh, from the power generation sector consumption-wise was 41.2 billion cubic feet per day, but on that particular single day, it was 44.5. This coming about, obviously, as the result of the U.S. scrapping more and more as time goes by of its coal-fired power plants and replacing them with natural gas-fired power generation. A decision that I've been saying repeatedly is going to inevitably backfire. But regardless, welcome back everybody to another weekly energy and resource update episode. Here with Max Ogier, we, as always, go over everything that's come out over the course of the week in regards to energy and natural resources, from oil and gas to mining and minerals, new developments, discoveries, data releases, everything. Corresponding to the foundational underlying things that actually hold up and uh, and discreetly govern and affect uh, the affordability and quality of your lives, but are essentially never spoken of by any form of mainstream media because it doesn't get as many views as Trump and angry Twitter riots. So if you'd like to hear more and hear more frequently about uh, deeper, more foundationally important things and hear less about political Twitter outrages, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon and stick around here. And before we dive into the data, I would like to give an enormous thanks to David Beatty, who as of a few days ago became the third ever person to make a uh, PayPal donation and has made the largest yet so far PayPal donation. Links to my PayPal and Patreon are both down in the description below. Anyone who can and does want to support me, support the work that I do, help me recover from the massive dentist bill I just had to pay and uh, deal with the upcoming end of my health insurance coverage, which ends on the 26th of this month. So those links are down there for anyone who wants to. Thank you, David, whoever you are. Thank you so much. Now going into the data, U.S. oil production, if you remember from two weeks back, had dropped temporarily down to 11.3 million barrels per day as a result of uh, Gulf of Mexico production shutdowns because of that hurricane. Well, that's all back online, and U.S. oil production is now back up to 12.3 million barrels per day and should continue onwards now with its uh, staggered, slowed growth pace. I still, as I've said, expect it to get up to 12.8 by the end of the year and expect the U.S.'s second and final oil production peak to come between 13.5 and 13.8 million barrels per day. U.S. oil consumption is still staying high, coming in once again a little bit under 21.5 million barrels per day of consumption. Individual numbers within that being gasoline consumption, 9.65 million barrels per day. Diesel fuel consumption, still lingering under 4 million barrels per day, coming in at 3.89. And U.S. jet fuel consumption coming in at 1.81 million barrels per day. And briefly outside, global jet fuel consumption, again, which... U.S. jet fuel consumption is included in global total jet fuel consumption for this week averaged 6.3 million barrels per day. And U.S. crude oil inventories increased a little bit this week. That's the first increase in over seven weeks now, but this week it was a small increase of about 3 million barrels or so. And oil prices over the course of the week were between 50 and 55 dollars per barrel taking a drop from around 54 down towards 50 in the middle of the week before climbing back up now on the natural gas side of u.s data u.s natural gas production has tipped over 102 billion cubic feet per day up to 102.3 and i still expect it to hit or get over 104 by the end of this year 
and the U.S.'s final natural gas production peak to come most likely between 108 and 116. U.S. natural gas consumption total for the week averaged 86.9 billion cubic feet per day. The individual product numbers within that being heating demand actually climbing up a tiny bit, up to 8.3 billion cubic feet per day. Consumption by natural gas-fired power plants, as mentioned, the average across the week was 41.2 billion cubic feet per day. This also marks a month straight now where power sector consumption of natural gas in the U.S. has stayed above 40 billion cubic feet per day. U.S. natural gas exports took a decent sudden drop this week's average only being 4.7 billion cubic feet per day being exported on LNG tankers. And consumption of natural gas by the natural gas pipeline system for its own pumping system fuel coming in at 6.4. U.S. natural gas storage inventories this week are up to 2.69 trillion cubic feet in storage. In comparison to normally by this time of year, they would be up to 2.8. And last year, which had been a very high demand winter year as well, they were still down at 2.35. And natural gas prices have taken another dropping step down. And over the course of this week, they were fluctuating between $2 and $2.20 per thousand cubic feet. No sizable oil discoveries over the past bit of time. So total oil discoveries this year up to this point in 2019, still lingering a bit below six and a half billion barrels. Now we have the monthly oil production data from that group of six countries that releases theirs separately from OPEC and the rest of the world. China, again, as has been usual for the past year and a half or so, continuing to hold on to that fluctuating range of between 3.7 and 3.9 million barrels per day. This month in particular coming in at 3.82. Canada taking a little bit of a drop down, coming in at 4.12 million barrels per day. Egypt continuing to fluctuate around in the lower 600,000s, this month coming in at 626,000 barrels per day. And Mexico continues ever onward down its terminal decline, this month coming in just under 1.7 million barrels per day and likely going to touch 1.6 at or by the end of the year. Norway seems to have resumed an actual gradual terminal decline, now coming down just under 1.4 million barrels per day. They had been on terminal decline and then had stalled it and upsloped gradually for the last couple of years as newer discoveries from earlier on were brought online over these past couple of years, but now those have kind of played out. However, over these last couple of years in particular, brand new discoveries have been being made. However, it will take a number of years to drill all of those and set all of those up before those eventually start pumping oil out. So I believe we're going to see this uh, little pattern sort of replay itself. Norway's going to continue its resumed decline, lose up another few hundred thousand barrels of production, maybe down towards a million barrels a day. And then in several years when all of these most recent new fields start getting brought online that will stall it out, add a bit more back, and then eventually it will curve over the slope and resume decline again. And lastly, Russia, after several months back having gone all the way up to over 11 million barrels per day, is continuing to reluctantly comply with the uh, its agreement with OPEC to pull back its production and is currently pumping 10.83. Now out into our minerals and metals. Gold has gone up climbing and has come back up above $1,500 per ounce. This beginning to occur several days after the quarterly gold mining data updates, which based on the output rates of the first two quarters of this year, it is looking like Total global gold mine production this year may total out not really that much higher than last year, certainly less higher than expected at least, or actually it even looks like there may be a fair chance it will come in lower. And over the course of these last several years, the rate of increase over each previous year for total global gold production has been getting smaller and smaller each time. 
and the expectation that we may be approaching a total final global gold production peak is starting to set in. I have my own chart or graph here that I made. Uh, I'm only going to show this one, but you can consider it a preview of an upcoming video. This is kind of like a rough outlook path to uh, how I kind of think gold production globally is probably going to go. Now world silver production, as we have said constantly, already peaked back in 2015 and has been on the decline ever since then. And silver prices seem to almost be starting to react. As they continued climbing upwards over the past week, and during some portions of the week, even went up over $17 per ounce before falling just back below it again. As obviously implied by a production peak, silver, total global silver uh, output from mines is decreasing while global silver demand from civilization is still constantly increasing, obviously. Especially now with quickly growing demand from solar panel manufacturing. As despite many people's lack of knowledge of such, solar panels use a lot of silver. Now, over in the platinum group metals, platinum itself continuing to remain in the mid to upper 800s in terms of its price per ounce, while palladium, after lingering around in the 1500s for a while, has dropped back down into the 1400s. Nickel continues to outpace even my expectations, coming up towards $16,000 per ton during this week. And at the rate things are going, especially considering all factors and inventories especially, I'm actually now pretty expectant that uh, we're probably going to see 17 or 18 grand before this year is over. As nickel demand is rapidly expanding, a large portion of that expansion now being driven by electric vehicles. Not as an alloy component in the steel of said vehicle frames, although there definitely is some nickel in the steel, but instead as the nickel component of all the batteries of those electric vehicles battery packs. Now if you watch this video here that's coming up on a link in the corner, which I really, really recommend you do, we show uh, loads of math in that video uh, regarding the Green New Deal type future, the green part of it, not the socialism and the politics. I don't care about the politics. I care about the energy and the resources because there's not enough. It's not going to work. But it's shown clearly in, in the math that uh, there, there's, n there's not enough nickel uh, for, for this whole thing to work out. There's enough lithium. There's more than enough manganese. There's just, just barely enough graphite. But uh, there is not enough nickel. Nickel is, is going to be the real, uh, the real dream killer, so to say. Nickel inventories, in particular, if you remember, I talked about how over the last year in particular, since this time last year, they had fallen from about 250,000 tons of excess nickel globally in storage in inventories across the world, down to, it was around, I think, 155,000 tons or so, back in the middle of July. Well, now it's continued falling and it's down to only around 142,000 spare tons. So global demand for nickel is legitimately and consistently now above global supply. Lead inventories, on the other hand, started actually jumping back upwards again for a few days. However, it stopped around 87,000 tons and since then has resumed declining and are now back down to about 84,000 tons. As an initial result of the sudden increase, lead prices had fallen back down below $2,000 per ton. However, after that stopped and they just resumed decreasing again, lead has now jumped back up to back over $2,000 per ton. Now over to the rare earth metals. They have reversed their few weeks of declines. Dysprosium, critical component of electric vehicle motors, and also just regular electric motors in general, enormously critical components of wind turbines, and numerous other things. Dysprosium had dropped back down to $349 per kilogram, but has started ticking back upwards again over the course of this week, 
now coming back up over $351 per kilogram. Terbium had been dropping down from $692 all the way down to under $680 per kilogram, but now has started to come back up towards $682 per kilogram. And neodymium, critical component in all of the same things, as well as the resonator magnet that allows the existence of speakers and microphones. Neodymium is what lets you hear things that aren't there. Neodymium had dropped back down towards $70 per kilogram, but now has come back up to $72 per kilogram. And in a few other uh, random metals, manganese took a decent drop from the 1900s down to $1,795 per ton, as a manganese mine that had previously been shut down in Ghana has reopened and resumed production, and several manganese mining operations in China have ramped up and added increased capacity. And titanium, after remaining relatively immobile for a long time, has resumed moving and has been ticking up, now coming back over $11 per kilogram. Titanium, of course, being the critical alloying component for extremely high-strength steel. Everything from critical support joints, modern bridge cables, aircraft engine parts, bracing portions of underground and underwater tunnels, all sorts of fun, important stuff. That's about it for this week. Absolutely thank you, everyone. If you enjoyed everything you got to hear about, please leave a like on the video. You can also check out some of my side channels as well for other content. My links are in the description if you want to donate, want to help out. We're at over 3,000 subs now, so if everybody donated, like, a single dollar just once a year. That at this point would actually go a very, very long way. But regardless of anything else, I hope everything's going great for all of you, and I will see you all around next time.